Hello and welcome to the Ministry of Bridges. I keep saying this channel is about bridges and today I bring you a project with 29 bridges. Let's find out about this project in Finland. My name is Gabriel Neves and this is the Ministry of Bridges. So I pick two. I I love mountain biking and playing drums. My name is Jakko Taipale. I work at Destia and I'm project manager. And my hobbies are also mountain biking and sports, depending on the time of the year, but running and walking. My name is Jarmo Niskanen and I'm working at Väylä in Finland. And um, my main hobbies are also mountain biking and playing guitar. and. Um, uh, building a race motorcycle. My name is Markus Avola. I'm a development manager in Destia and in the uh, bridge and concrete construction sector. And my hobby is um, sport in every, every way, <laughs> every kind of sport. It depends on what, what season is. <laughs> Thank you all for accepting this invitation. Uh, I'm delighted to have you here and uh, I look forward to know more about the project. And I'll be starting with uh, ETU. We have 29 bridges. Uh, can you elaborate the type of bridges we have in this project? 29 in total, uh, like you said. Uh, most of them, they were uh, pretty basic, usual concrete bridges. Almost half of them were post-tensioned concrete cantilever bridges. And there was also a lot of double bridges because there's two bridges next to each other. Also, there were uh, just reinforced concrete, glue lamp bridge, steel tubular bridges, a uh, few steel arc bridges. Although it's uh, they were pretty basic bridges, there was a lot of them. So that, that really uh, gives some complexity to the project. Yarmo, uh, is this uh, an alliance or you are all tied directly uh, to the client? Uh, this project is design and build based project and we are tied uh, directly to main constructor and main constructor is tied directly to uh, designer. The next question is, I heard that uh, you guys are using uh, something called big room. Uh, what is that and is there any benefit, whatever that big room is? Yeah, we have the big room in our office. Uh, we use that in the de development phase together with the Väylä, Destia and Bridge designers and other designers. We mostly used it on development phase because in this project the development phase was quite long. Uh, over um, almost half a year we did planning together to make savings, to make, make better designs and everything like that. So it was a uh, very uh, important place at that time. But you know, <laughs> with this Corona situation, we, we we don't allow to use it now, so. Jarmo, as uh, owner, uh, why did you choose the design build project type? Uh, we only had a road plan phase finale size in that time. We didn't have any uh, building plans ready. That's the main reason why we decided to use design build project. And also uh, we wanted to use it because I, I feel I have made a lot of projects with this design build uh, project type. And I feel 
we can get better results with the project. Which were your uh, initial requirements uh, for this uh, project and what is the final handover, uh, for instance, for the operations and maintenance or asset management? The project has to be ready at the end of 2023. And all the requirements was set out in product requirements document when we were planning this project together. But I think Jaakko can answer <laughs> more if we... Yeah, the requirements, they're based on, on the timetable time and, and the quality of the, the product. They are pretty high standard in this project and also the demands of the design, anything have to be model. It's high standards. Every part of the project, designing, the quality of the construction, and and the staff, also the staff. We have to have uh, the best staff available in the project. So the main difference in this pro project from the others are that we are using model-based reporting from the construction side to owner of the project. In most projects, we use models to build the project, but other information is coming back with, with old-fashioned methods. But in this project, all the reports and everything, how, how they are doing that work is, is reported to models and they only give models back to us. So we look what's happening from the models. So BIM is something from the past for people like you. I, I would say model-based project. That is the new step that we are all in. Do you agree with this statement? Yes. Sure, we do. <laughs> yeah, oh, of course, yeah. Yes, yeah. definitely. And, and the most um, difficult thing is to um, change your thinking. And I, all these guys around me are in these days, they are understanding that this is model-based designing. We don't make designs anymore in 2D, and then we send it them to India, and they make models. No, not that way. They are designing in models, and the way they are thinking is changed the other way. Not making models from the designs. They design, make models and if we need to, we make some some plans from those models. But the model is the base of thinking. In the uh, tender phase, uh, there was a requirement from the client about BIM, and that these uh, requirements were more focused in this project altogether and the whole infrastructure, not much of structures. We have our own guidelines in Finland for bridges and, and for BIM in bridges particularly. But, but these uh, tender requirements made it possible that the whole project is being thought differently, like Jarmo said. We have been producing bridge BIM models almost a decade now, but there's no function with those models if everything else is in 2D. But now when the whole project level is being brought a notch higher into into the BIM world, there was a whole new world for the bridge models as well. So a lot of these things were done for the first time for us as well, but there was also a lot of things that we have been already doing for years. And, and we had pretty good knowledge how we would like to work with the models. And I think with that knowledge and the re uh, the initial requirements from the client that that made the project what it is today. So there was requirement, there was knowledge, and there was a lot of lot of development in the development phase. So it's it's not particularly maybe not a design and build. It's develop design and build, and I think that development phase was really important. And, and kind of set the right direction where this project would be going in the actual design and build stage. And I can continue a few, few words on that. Okay, we have had a few former projects with the Tsubeko and we have planned, planned this process before many times, many years before. 
this project. We have planned this design process and uh, how we can do it and what kind of uh, develop we have to do. And now we can we have this this uh, wonderful project that we have have uh, can try this this process and and very good, very good thing. If you are doing design in a traditional way, uh, listen to these guys. They are doing it for a decade. And if you are building in the traditional way, listen to these guys. They are building it. It's, in this case, we're talking about a 15 kilometers road with 29 bridges. Uh, Eto, uh, I know that uh, Sveco is very advanced in uh, algorithm modeling or parametric modeling, Rhino, Grasshopper. Uh, so uh, do you mind to elaborate a little bit uh, if every bridge uh, used parametric modeling uh, or was just in a, a few bridges? Uh, in this project, uh, the Grasshopper was maybe less used because it's. I think we use it more on more complex structures and these these type of bridges that we have designed here they are basically our trademark products we have we have done tens and hundreds of these type of bridges so we have developed quite efficient ways of of modeling these bridges during the past years now i have here a question i don't know who wants to answer that this question that is the the main benefits uh, from the design uh, to construction in my opinion, it's the time-saving thing. I think we have saved 20 or 25 weeks time in this with this process. We have made this process more straight. It's more easier to make make changes to plans and everything like that if we are doing it only model-based. We don't have to produce any kind of papers and chase them. So the, the process is more straight all the time, in both ways. What do you guys think about generating 2D drawings? There's place for everything. There's a place for drawings and there's a place for BIM models. And I know that it, a drawing is a, it, it's kind of an uh, artist's way of seeing things and it's it's a traditional way of of illustrating structures and i think that that's fine but do we need to produce 70 or 80 drawings from one bridge no i don't think so i would say we are expert in in designing complex structures like bridges not not drawing lines that's that's my my pick so we will produce drawings if they're needed but We'd rather push the beam part and maybe work a bit more or on how the beam model can be used beneficially in the later stages from the design. I think we are now moving on to direction where we are now producing one single drawing, one official approved drawing from single bridge and, and all the other, other parts are being being picked out from the model, not from the drawings. That's the direction at the moment. And I think that's that's the right direction because we want to focus on, on design. We want to focus on doing a best design as possible, not spending our time on doing drawings, spending the time where it's needed in the design. I have one question here, but uh, I feel ashamed and I'm not going to ask. Uh, it was to do if if the model could beat the the drawings in having information. And I think it's such a silly question that I'm not going to make this question. Of course, the model can have more information than the drawing because the model has all the information. So let's move on with this one. Etu, uh, what do you think about RFIs, request for information from site to design? I think if, if we have succeeded in our work in producing model the way we are required to there there is going to be no RFIs after that and there hasn't been not to my my knowledge uh, now uh, Yarmo uh, as the project director uh, of the owner uh, did you have uh, the decision power to say this project was going to be model based or in other words uh, who made the decision 
let's do this in a model-based uh, project. Right, yes, I did have a power to say it. And uh, in, the, in my past times, I have been working as a designer and I'm one of the first designers in Finland who did model-based designing for roads at uh, uh, early 90s, 93, 94, and like that. So it comes from there, the knowledge of the models and power of the models. And yes, I have enough power to say that um, this project has to be done model-based, and I did it. And I think it was right decision. Right, you were just being officially uh, promoted to hero, all right? Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so how easy it was to make this decision? And uh, do you really see the, because now we have models, then the inspection process is going to be, uh, that model is going to be reused for uh, inspections and even for op operations and maintenance? Well, yes, it was easy, but I, I look at it a little bit a different way. Um, in my work, I have to always look the ways how we get the better solutions for this kind of projects. And we have to test different kind of systems. Uh, I hate the word that we have done this like this 30 years and we are still doing it like we have done 30 years ago. I hate it. Always makes um, work boring if you are doing it the same way. So we have to think and develop and test different kind of things in different kind of projects. And that's how it goes to forward. So what about the law in Finland uh, to accommodate this uh, sort of project, model-based project? Actually law, it, it doesn't make any restriction for this kind of projects. Uh, we are doing with same level with model based or without model it, it doesn't change anything if we think it from the law we are producing uh, every document we need to do what law uh, expects us to do we are doing everything like law says but with the model base and uh, what about so how many models uh, let's say let's see if i can say vila uh, the finnish transport uh, agency approved with this method just uh, uh, approved just based in models mm, in this project over 50 and uh, <clears throat> we have used it in other projects too uh, in these days so i think it's over 100 models bridge models has approved with this method in these days. How did you make remarks uh, during the design stage uh, and uh, dealing with the designer? Uh, did you use uh, Trimbo Connect or any other tool? Um, mostly we used memos and project portal to share those memos. And um, But in some ways, if we could use it, we, we used some marks on the models too, but mostly with the memos. Marco, now the contractor uh, point of view. So how do you see the, what is the importance of this uh, model uh, based project in the contractor point of view? I think the main thing is, uh, is uh, that uh, in the inspection process, when you use models, that, uh, that uh, we, we make the inspection for the model that we get the that model for the dominant contract document because that's the main thing in this process because if we if we use drawings in this process we have to use drawings as a main contractor when we have an inspected model we can use it for example measuring things and and uh, make uh, make rebars and like that uh, we use model for for that if we can do that when it when it, the model is inspected, we can do that. And that's the main thing that uh, in this process, process that we can continue and uh, develop many things that when we can use model. That, uh, that's, uh, that's the basic thing and most important thing in this thing. Because uh, if we, 
uh, we we have Finland in Finland we have many monal projects, but uh, they do do drawings for that inspection process, and uh, that's the reason why those projects we have to use drawings. But uh, this is the step we have to take that we use models for this inspection process. And after that, we can develop many things, uh, how we measure, how we do uh, rebars more efficient way and that kind of things. And that's the, I think that's the, that's the most important in this process. Right, and, uh, and that inspec inspection is uh, made directly into the BIM software or you using any other software with the IFC of the model uh, inserted? Uh, we use Triple Connect and, and we use IFC models and, and that's, the, that's a good thing. And, and, and in this process, we share views in this. this uh, and, and of course, we have a few documents and few drawings. And that that's the main process. But we basically we all use that IFC model for this inspection process. And that is that when you inspect that that model, and after that is a dominant contract document, and that's open the whole thing after that. And that's the, that's the key issue of this process. In the future, we have to have to use this process every project if we want to develop this model based, based thing. And I think in a, all over this, if, if you have to inspect uh, this, of course, we have to make the inspection for the, for the models or designing drawings or whatever. This, this model is the first thing we have to inspect. Approval process, we need to use um some old-fashioned methods with the geotechnical information because the geotechnical information cannot be set in the model in these days. And not, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Yeah. And I don't understand why, because the geotechnical uh, um, points were the first thing in the design process in the 70s or 80s, which has always had 3D like X, Y, and Z coordinates mm -hmm. in 70s, early 70s. <laughs> so I don't know why they are not in the, the models in these days. But... And that's the one thing we have to develop in the future. And uh, we, ha we have a few projects uh, for, for these uh, geotechnical problems. And uh, in the future, that's, that's not going to be a problem anymore, I think. Uh, I, I want to know if the rebar fabricator uh, had ex previous experience working this way uh, and uh, how challenging was uh, using the IFC model uh, directly into probably the bar bending machines and so on. Maybe uh, Yaku or Marco? Uh, our supplier didn't have any experience beforehand and actually it hasn't been challenging at all. all only they had to do some modifications to their systems uh, but once they were done everything have gone pretty smoothly and there has been no mistakes in rebar segments so in this case then with beam we know when we model the rebar uh, if it's not fitting in the model is not going to be uh, okay on site but uh, which kind of mistakes can happen working this way i don't know uh, everything is in on the model so the mistakes there are aren't any that many mistakes than the normal normal way so i i think there's only benefits in this uh, designing in in model and using models in rebar maybe i i can continue with the old fashioned way with the drawings we do have different uh, revisions of the drawings there are a lot of more places for mistakes in the old fa old fashioned way because now we are using only one model and it's in the one place it's in triple connect and we are sharing it from there and when the designer make a, a changes for the model uh, he updates the model and we are sharing to everyone with the triple connect there are no different revisions with with the drawings like in old fashioned way so less less place 
about mistakes. I would like to also have have designer perspective here. Uh, like Jakko said, it's if it's in the model, there should be no errors. And and I think the reason for that is that we have already built the bridge on our desktops the very first time. We haven't only got the cross section from the easiest or the most simple part of the bridge. We have to really think think it through every single detail, every single rebar, everything. So we have to put our effort into the quality of the model. And from that on, I think that leaves a little or maybe no room for error from that on. And if we talk about uh, construction, uh, so how did the construction workers uh, reacted uh, to this way of work, uh, so if there was any resistance. Workers are also pleased that we have approved designs as fast as possible, but the, uh, at this moment we still need paper designs and these model-based designs are supporting role on the site. It's really demonstrative that we have these models in on site, but we still need those screenshots from the models for the workers. Uh, we we, all, we have to have to make uh, make working drawings and uh, and like that and but they are quite uh, simple to do and uh, they are uh, like Jako say they are screenshots with the measurements and uh, like that it is quite simple you know simple constructions for example foundations they are we we need only few few working drawings few screenshots for for the construction and uh, we can do it. Okay, well, the workers are seeing that, that, that they okay, the working drawings are a little bit different kind of than before that, but they are quite good because they are 3D screenshots or, or like that, or a little bit different than before, but nothing more. And, and we can also use, use model in a site office. Many times they they are checking the construction on the site office uh, using model, and that's 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 a good thing that they they see the construction in a 3D, and and, and that's that makes more simple to do the construction, and that kind of things we are doing on site. We can uh, cut the model uh, in the 3D environment, uh, and then probably uh, print a couple of um, images of that 3D, uh, e even looking like a, a 2D uh, section, right? Are they using, but uh, they are not printing, it's not a drawing, it's a snapshot of the 3D model. Yeah, that kind of, yeah. And and of course, there's there's many part of uh, these, these bridge constructions, there's many parts that, the, that they, they have to check the details. And that's the, the model is good for that, uh, that uh, you are checking the the detail in the site office, and that's make makes makes to that repairing for work more easier, and and that that's a good thing, and that's the way we use use it on site. And of course, these screenshots and 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 printing papers for for that, and that's that's the normal <clears throat> way. But uh, that's a, that's a. We don't use tablets that the rebar worker is using tablets on site. That's not possible. <laughs> Never. <laughs> I think that that's a, that's a, maybe somebody can try that. But we we use model and, and simple drawings. That's the best way to do. If they, they need to be on site with that uh, printed uh, snapshot of the model, they laminate the, 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 the paper and so on because of the, the, the weather, right? So it's a, it's a traditional way, but uh, with information taken from the model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and of course, we, we can check the details with the tablet on site. For example, when you check the rebar details and that we are using uh, using site manager have a have a tablet and we can check the details few first bridges i think it was a little bit slower to build bridges in this new method but after they have changed their thinking and they have learned how to use the models and check things from the models it, it's not slower anymore i think we save time in these days. Jakob can can reply if... if. Yeah, there, there has been a 
a great development in there. So many many bridges. <laughs> they yeah. and we are. <coughs> I can... have also uh, think that we have to make some new methods on the bridges. Like we have to put put a big screen there where the the, the site workers can go and check things. So why to use small tablets? It's not easy way to use. We, we put the big screen and, and we use that with the touch screen uh, system or something. So how long takes the process from my change in the office to the site worker? It depends what we are doing with the roads. It's about minutes. And in the bridges, it's a longer period because we have to check it double time before it can go to the site work. And, and once the design is approved, after that we started to build. So if we see errors in the design, but in this case there haven't been that many errors. The main thing is that after design is approved, then we start building. Then everything is it, it's all right i don't know how how long does it take to when a to saves the design to, into the triple connect it's in minutes in our use or so if we moved into operations and maintenance or asset management uh, yarmo uh, is the owner going to use the model for asset management uh, and how do you see the ifc uh, open format uh, to keep being used for the future? Uh, I think we are going to use it um, um, in the later, in the future, because in in this time, um, the model do not allow us to add more information there. What we uh, needed to use it for asset management. But I, I think it can be in the near future. future. And um, IFC, it's the most powerful open format for the models in these days, but but it has some restrictions, so um, we need to develop it further. We, we can add more information there. We can make the uh, process uh, in, in two ways, like from the design to site and from site to owner. So it has to think it a um, little bit larger that only the, the format to, for the bridge models or something. There has to be a room for the different kind of information too. This is happening mainly in the Nordic countries, right? Is there any uh, special thing uh, with the Nordic countries uh, to be on uh, the front runners of this model-based uh, project? I don't know, but I have to say that we are lazy people. We always have to think <laughs> how to make it easier. So, so uh, I don't know the main reason why we are doing it like this. But um, may maybe the, um, all the bridges and every kind of what we are building is a little bit more complicated here in northern part of Europe than in the center of Europe. If you think bridges in, in or roads in the middle Europe, it, they are a lot, lot of easier build them, you know, without winter or, or any zero degrees and anything like that. So that might be a reason. And I think laziness is the <laughs> other key also. <laughs> Uh, on top of that, I think the whole construction cult culture is quite the same in all the all of the Nordic countries, and we have done a lot of collaboration with our neighbor countries, and and uh, at least us for the designers, we have colleagues in all all the other Nordic countries, and we uh, change information monthly, so we know where where the others are going, and we are we are trying to make the best out of it. And I don't know, maybe there's also a bit of competition. We have a long history of competing in ice hockey and, and all, all other winter sports. So I think this would be our next 
Nordic skiing or ice hockey tournament, this whole BIM model based construction? I don't know. Norwegians are, are much better skiers than we are in these days, so we have to be much higher level on the model based projects. <laughs> competition <laughs> so that means uh, you guys cannot go back to a traditional um, uh, kind of project with uh, creating all those uh, dozens and dozens of drawings right no no, no way yeah no. and okay I, I can say that uh, okay this is as a sub as a main contractor we have we use it models uh, when we when we use model, uh, machine automation. We use and we need model for that, and it's a natural way to do this this kind of designing process. And uh, this this uh, whole process is model based. It is the best way to do, and uh, and that's a basic thing that uh, we are not going back uh, to drawings because this is mo most efficient way to do things on site and that's the basic thing and and of course money talks <laughs> or, or also cheapest way to do and that's that's a as a main contractor it's an important thing and, and I, I think that's that's an important thing for the client also i think i can speak for all of us this have been a long run uh, there have been pilot projects during the last 10 years small one bridges here and there but now once we have get to the level that, that that we have proved this way of working is is beneficial and it's it's the right direction i think there's no turning back at this point it's been a long process and i think now we re, we ha, we have got got there and it, this is only only the new beginning i have one here uh, for mark so is desia international company or is just uh, uh, in Finland? Now, mostly in Finland, but uh, in a few Nordic countries also, but uh, not not more. Are you going to conquer the world? Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> in this in this model thing, so of course. <laughs> uh, what is the advice uh, you give to other bridge uh, owners, designers, contractors on, around the world uh, if they want to try uh, this method? I think this is a good way to intensify your whole building or co construction processes and to be more productive. So you have to be open-minded and, and work together. Like Jakko said, think differently. And, and there's a lot of people who have already done this successfully. So invite someone over who have done it already. Do not make the whole, do not start the learning process from 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 the zero just just ask for the expertise because all these people here they they know how how we can succeed with with the model based projects yeah. yes and and uh, most important thing is uh, is uh, we have to do it together because because as a main contractor we can't do that whole process alone we need uh, need the whole all project parties have to be doing this together because this is uh, this is this whole process is you have to know uh, do something in a different way but together we can do that as we see it in this project I can imagine uh, on site you have a workforce uh, very experienced, but is getting older. So you may need to look into the youngsters. So how easy is to convince the youngsters to come and work on site? I think in these days it's easier with the model-based building system because um, youngsters they are used to use computers, playing games and think in 3D. Now, finally, we have something to uh, offer them. I think that that technology part will, will gain attention a bit more because it, it, it probably makes it more attracting for young people to work with different methods. And, and obviously, these are the ones how, who are and will be doing the revolution. So, so they are they are the main players in the future. So that's really really interesting, and that's that's really important as well to have those people aboard. 
In the past, when I was doing BIM, uh, back when I was working for WSP and Sveco and, uh, and ACOM, uh, I was always saying that BIM, uh, we need to do BIM between people, right? So the models are there and um, the, everything is connected, but sometimes even doing uh, the 3D model with information, things were, uh, something was missing there. And when I identified was the beam between people. So Eto, what is your point on, on this uh, matter? It's all about the communication because we cannot just, just adopt some new technology and use that with our old processes. It just doesn't work. Like, like said before, we have this development phase and there was a lot of development being done with the client Vaulavirasto the contractor Destia and Asweco as a designer and, and how we are going to th do things, how we are going to communicate, how we are going to exchange information and things like that. And, and, and at the construction phase, how we are going to translate that model into the uh, reinforcement production. Good old fashioned dialogue. It's not, not about just just putting up um, tons of paper. It's it's about communication. Now when we have this common platform where the, all the information is, we also have to work together around that platform. And that's really important. And that, that makes all the benefits. In a project, we have to discuss about the process because we have, now we have good tools. We have IFC models. Trimble Connect and like that. And there is many tools inside, for example, inside the Trimble Connect. But in a project, we have to discuss what we are using and what is the process. That's the main thing. When I, I train the people using Trimble Connect, I, I always say this is a tool. You have to discuss what is the process inside the project. Because we have year by year we have a better tools but we have to discuss what is the process inside the project because nothing works well if if there is there is no good process in a project and that's the main thing in this this model based project also that's that's the key issue about the, and that how the process works and and and, and I think this is a very important thing for this, this how it works. And in this Kiriti Kakowski project, it it's works very well. And, and that's the reason why it's, we have a benefits about that. In development phase, we um, sit down and we did a lot of discussion how we are going to uh, make this process work. And we had to change some processes to allow to use this new technology. Because uh, like, like Ed said, uh, if we are going to use new, uh, new, new things in this old process, it doesn't work. It doesn't give us any, any benefits what we are waiting for. So the process, like Marco said, we have to think it in the new way. For example, the good way to do is uh, that, that we, we share share views and the model views. When, it, when you, you have to inspect the model, you, you can check the view. You, you get it and you check it and that's it. It's a simple thing. And there is uh, with the model, there is a document where is the where is the status and uh, what is, what is uh, inside the model? And that's a, that's a good thing. Simple way to do, simple process and good way to do, and and that make it make it work very well. Thank you, Eto, Marco, Jaco, and Yarmo, uh, for being here. I wish you all the best for your designs and for your construction and uh, for your uh, professions. And see you around. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Support your Ministry of Bridges channel by leaving comments, like, and subscribing. Now it's a skiing, skiing time. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
It's all for now, Bridges people. See you on the next episode and have a brimmer day.